Welcome to the Holistic Health Show, where the worlds of science and spirituality converge to illuminate a path towards total well-being. Join us as we embark on a journey to bridge the gap between Western medicine and complementary therapies, offering you a roadmap to embrace a proactive, holistic approach to your health. It's time to empower yourself with choices that nurture your body, mind, and soul. Welcome to a world of infinite possibilities for your optimal health. Welcome back to the Holistic Health Show. I'm very happy that you are joining us again today. Today we have Leslie Santos on the show. Leslie's a personal trainer. She is in Canada, so she's joining me. I think it's her evening. Welcome to the show, Leslie. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited. Yeah. So Leslie, you're going to talk to us today. You, you're a personal trainer, but more recently you've had a gorgeous daughter and now you're kind of leaning towards postpartum fitness and helping moms kind of get their body and their health back. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so, so I would love for you to jump right in and tell us all about what you do. Absolutely. So like you said, personal trainer. So that's how I started out. I was always into fitness, especially like you can relate, living away from family. It kept me sane and helped me with mental health and just overall made me happy. So with a few years of doing that and training women as well, I became pregnant. Mm. The whole pregnancy journey, I did not really love. Because (laughs) I couldn't train like I did before. I was so exhausted all the time. Well, one thing that I, I knew a pelvic floor physiotherapist, I worked with her at a clinical athletic center. And she told me, if you cannot get your exercise in, keep doing core work. Okay. And so I kind of focused on that core work, core work. I'm interested you know? actually that you mentioned this. And this, like I said to you, you know, prior to jumping on the show today, this is an entirely new area for me. So I guess when I think pregnancy, and I don't have any experience with that. So, you know, again, that is even all new to me. So when you say core work, I always thought you couldn't really do a lot of core work when you're pregnant because you've got a baby in there. So Exactly. Yeah, can you expand on that a little? Absolutely. We don't really do ab work. Okay. So doing abdominal exercises can be a little bit different than actually just bracing your core. So, of course, when you become pregnant, your abs separate. I actually yeah. didn't even know that. I literally yeah, didn't that. even know it, right? You just don't yeah. pay attention to it. And yeah. so your abs will separate, separate, and they get very, very weak. So, of yeah. course, you can't do flexion in the body, you know, because it's bad for the fetus. Like, you know, just its organs and stuff. It's just really bad on your pelvic floor and stuff. Mm. For me, anyway, it was. I, I couldn't do anything. And so doing core work. Like even like leaning back and just bracing your core, kind of just doing that little cough. That's, oh, yeah. that's just core bracing. Side planks, just holding, kind of engaging that core and kind of anything you do. So just getting uh, that activation, I guess, is it? Yes. Yeah. Even yeah. when you're standing, just kind of like leaning back a little bit. So that's what yeah. my physiotherapist taught me. I was constantly aware of engaging yeah. my core the whole time. I ended up having an emergency C-section like oh, wow. three weeks before she was due. Was not prepared for that at all. Nobody wow. in my family had a C-section. And so in the hospital, <laughs> they told me I was going to have a C-section. I'm like, okay, so like I, I understand the process, but what does that mean afterwards? Like postpartum for me. <laughs> they told me, well, it's a, it's a longer recovery. You know, it's of course, see a pelvic floor physiotherapist. So my mind was completely flooded. I was not prepared for this at all. Yeah. So I still had to wait. The usually everybody's dependent uh, on their body. They say anywhere between three to eight weeks to even get like ready for exercise. But even just oh. like like core work again, I didn't start mine until six weeks. I had wow. to relearn how to use everything down there even just like to pee like and I would like literally I would have it's like I would kind of had like have to meditate and like 
like really just like breathe. And that's how I began dive, uh, dive around breathing and just kind okay. of just breathing from the belly, you know, expanding the belly instead of your chest. And yeah. that is just, that's slowly kind of activating the core right in and out, in and out. Now, when I was doing that, I never understood any of really what I was doing, but I was just listening to instructions. I actually, I went to the uh, pelvic floor physiotherapist. Luckily, I did not have, my abs did not separate too much because mm. of the core engagement I did, especially in that third trimester. That seemed to have helped me. And I still was physically active when I was pregnant, but she told me like, really like turn it up a notch. If you can work out, great, but just focus on things like everybody always hear kegels, kegels, kegels. Yeah. It's not necessarily kegels. You know, when somebody describes, oh, okay, hold your pee. It's so much more than that. There are like mm. four or five steps to get to that point, right? So it's like you're, yeah. you can miss, a f you know, strengthening a few areas of your pelvic floor if you're just going to, oh, squeeze, right? Mm. So I learned all of that. I took my time. I was not actually ready to work out until I was definitely at the 10 week mark. I found it very difficult for the first two weeks. I even had my husband had to hold my hand as I sat down on the toilet. Yeah. Like it so really what? took a toll. I know you said, say it takes 10 weeks for you to work out and everyone's different. I'm just kind of trying to put a timeline here. So your husband's helping you go to the bathroom and, you know, helping you kind of get around for two weeks. But week three, are you walking any length of a distance or are you still doing, you know, nothing? And then what does 10 week workout look like? Does that mean, OK, now I'm ready to do weights again or now I'm ready to walk? You know, that's those are great questions. Two hours after my major abdominal surgery, anybody within Canada, as, as my knowledge anyway, <laughs> they are kind of forced to get up and walk. So I probably walked about... 40 meters in an hour. It was very, wow. very slow. I had to do that three to five times a day. It was very uncomfortable. Yeah. Uh, if I had my time back, I definitely would have researched C-section stuff. Mm -hmm. I just, it just never occurred to me. But I also learned so much about myself. I'm, I'm honestly like, yes, I'm a different person because I'm now a mother. Mm. But I'm such a different person because of that emergency C-section. It just really helped empower me, made me really yeah. believe in myself, made me love my body for what it could do. And so I just feel so much like more mentally. And a lot of women struggle with that because, yeah, you don't get the birth experience that you expected. I didn't get to hold my daughter in my arms mm. when I first had her and stuff. But it it doesn't take away from the life that I've created and stuff, yeah, you know? Absolutely. So, so at that, so for the first two weeks, I was pretty much helpless, but yeah. kind of worked in my favor because I didn't have to change any diapers. Well, <laughs> yeah. And I was breastfeeding at the time. So I was learning yeah. that as well. So like my husband and my mother would just like give her to me. I would bond with her as much as possible and then just rest, rest, rest. So it was well. straight from and the two weeks, the walking, 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 but rest. So walking for mm. about 20 minutes, resting for an hour, walking 20 minutes, resting for an hour. And it wiped me out. Like it was yeah. a good thing that my mom was here to help. So at that three week mark, oh, and mind you, I was not allowed to drive for five to six weeks okay, uh, because wow. the uh, seatbelt sits right across the incision. Yeah, of course. And so... Yeah, definitely the breastfeeding, I feel definitely helped because something else that I learned is that your uterus is slowly like contracting back down to its size every time that you breastfeed. So you'll actually, when the baby latches on, you get these weird cramps. And as it was happening, I was like, oh, wh why, why is down there happening <laughs> yeah. when I breastfeed? And the nurse, she's like, yeah, it releases hormones. She's like, and wow. it helps. Yeah, it helps your body heal. So it's like the organs and stuff are slowly kind of just shifting down. And of course, I had a midwife and she did massaging and it was not the good massage. <laughs> no, I bet. Yeah. But it, you know, that really, really helped. And of course, you know, they say that also helps with the weight loss of the baby. But yeah, at that three to five week mark, still a lot of walking. 
And yeah. I was stretching, just kind of doing like mobility stuff, anything and everything. And mm. then uh, it was probably that six to eight week mark. I would put baby sensory videos from YouTube on because yeah. my daughter seemed very stimulated by that. And my mother was just leaving to go back home. So I didn't have as much support and I would yeah. dance. I was just dancing. Nice. Yeah. You know, just, just, just moving my body. And I, and at this time I was still kind of like seeing what other people were doing, but I didn't even know what questions to ask until I went to see my pelvic floor physiotherapist. I think that was at the eight week mark. And she gave me the, the go ahead. Yeah, you are ready to weight train. No, wow. no, I wasn't. <laughs> and a lot of people feel pressured. I know I wow. feel pressured. I'm like, oh, I'm supposed to be this person. I've worked out for years, like lived an active lifestyle. And so it, you I'm, know, everyone hears about ready. bouncing back, right? Yeah. Yeah. And mm. people, they'll say to me, oh, you bounced back. No, it's been a year and a half. I, I finally I got abs again. This. But yeah. I worked very, very hard. And actually, I had my daughter in uh, April of 2022. It's the end of November 2022 was mm. when my incision stopped hurting. Wow. Okay. So I could not have a normal workout. So when you ask, yeah. say, at like that 10-week mark, when I started working out, what were my workouts like? My workouts were exactly like my warmer warm-ups are right <laughs> now. Not really a whole lot. I was not really sweating that much at all. And mind you, the pressure was on me even more because when I had my daughter, I only had four months until I was supposed to get married. Four yeah, months to fit right. into my wedding dress. So the yeah. pressure was on. So just a lot of walking, a lot of walking. But with all of the research, I kept at that core rehab, the pelvic floor, the breathing. I did it so many times a day. The pelvic floor physiotherapist told me I did not need to do it that much because A, I did the core work during pregnancy, mm -hmm. so I did not have much diastasis recti, which is the ab separation. And B, like I was just, I, I took care of myself so well. And mm -hmm. the fact that I didn't have the uh, vaginal delivery definitely helped my pelvic floor. Right. But I did all of it so yeah. I could learn exactly what to do. Because when I found it so hard, I was really down on myself some days. And I'm like, you know what? There are definitely other people like me. There are other yeah. moms like me going through the exact same stuff. And there needs to be more resources. Like when I was like looking up core rehab, I actually did not find that much. Yeah, um, so and my research and I'm like, I am going to, I am going to kind of find a link for this. I'm going to focus my personal training with women, I'm now going to focus it more on the postpartum aspect because I didn't mm. really get too much of it while I was pregnant. And I really, that's like my passion really grew. Like I just like soaked it all up like a sponge after, after my delivery. So I just, just started, I, I created social media groups. I wrote programs. I read and read and read so many articles created this Facebook page, which has been phenomenal. I've had so much support. I've seen that recently. You've got an incredible following. You're supporting a lot of moms. I've, I've been, I follow that page as well. And it's just the comments that you see coming in from people and it's, you're helping a lot of women, I think. It's yeah. so rewarding. It is yeah. so rewarding. I offer my ear as well mm -hmm. to people who yeah. just need to vent. Absolutely. And there's there's a lot of value in that because absolutely as a as a woman, how really good is it that. to have somebody to vent yeah. to? You know, yes. And then yeah. as a mother, women empowerment, you know? right? And yeah. I know with some people like you know like all oh, women empowerment. It's kind of cheesy. No, we really need to build yeah, each other up. We there are so many obstacles and especially so much stress on us, uh, our appearance and how mm. we should be and. You know, and it's really easy to talk to somebody who doesn't know you, who doesn't know anything about your life. I, in this journey, and I really just focused on the, the mom pooch. Yeah. And that diastasis recti, the ab separation, just literally helping women lose weight, do that poor rehab and pelvic floor work. And with time, that mom pooch shrinks. Now, so is I had a mom pooch. pooch, sorry, if I could just, there's a bit of a lag, so I don't mean to interrupt. But with the mom pooch that you you mentioned, does that happen as a result of ab separation or is that something additional? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. And of course, 
when you're pregnant, you put on additional weight. And where's the first yeah. place that women put weight on? It's the mm. belly, right? Yeah. Um, but it is because the top part of your abdomen can still be fairly tight like it was before, but because mm. when the baby starts to lower, the lower yeah. abs. So then you'll see, you'll see like a stomach and then, yeah. right? And that's the yeah. little pooch. And I had one, yeah. I could hold it in my hand wow. and I'm like, what am I going to do with this? This is so foreign to me. Like, am I ever going to get my body wow. back? And I just kept at it. Like I ate healthy, made sure that I rested. And so, th and literally like all of my following is all like mom pouch, mom pouch, mom pouch. Mm -hmm. And so that seems to be quite a niche that like clearly people don't have enough resources for. Yeah, and, like and through this channel, I'm learning about so much more with postpartum. For instance, like postpartum depression, urinary incontinence. Mm. Yeah. Somebody asked me a question about a umbilical hernia the other day, and I I feel I feel great. I feel humble that people you know look to me as a medical provider. <laughs> but of course, I always have to refer them to a healthcare practitioner. But just by these like questions, by people ask me these questions, I'm just learning so much. Yeah. And it's experience then that you can pass on to other people through the experience of the clients or women who are reaching out to you, right? Definitely. And that is why I, I created just a helpful guide to that core rehab. I created an ebook. I released that a few weeks ago. I've had a few people reach out to me and just honestly just thank me. They're doing it for two or three weeks. Mm. Can't even wow. see a difference yet. But it's like just like an easy guide. They're reading it. They know what yeah. to do. And they just like feel invested in it. And mentally, it has made them feel so I was going to say, yeah, just knowing that they've got this clear outline of, okay, this is, you know, X, Y, Z of what I should be doing must be just a relief and, you know, a mental and emotional relief. Yeah. You know, to Absolutely. know that there's something... For anyone listening, if Leslie doesn't mind, we might share the link. If you have a shareable link in the transcript below this video, is that something? Absolutely. We can do? Yeah. Great. So I wouldn't mind taking you through a diaphragm breathing session. Yeah. All right. If let's you would do like that. to do that. You could do it yeah. while you're sitting up. Yeah. I'll sit and up so a little straighter. Completely... I know. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> and what I always tell people is I usually just close my eyes. It's kind of like meditation to me. And so I always put one hand on my chest, one hand on my belly. You're going to inhale through your nose and you're going to fill your, your belly. Don't force the air in, just let it come naturally. And you'll feel your belly move, not your chest. If your chest is moving, just reset. Exhale through your mouth. So inhale, fill the belly. Exhale through the mouth. And really putting those two hands there really physically makes a difference with my clients. When they don't put their hands there, they, their chest tends to rise. So you can really focus just on the belly. I usually tell my clients, to do two to three sets of maybe eight to 10 reps. And although this is very simple, it's kind of like a mind muscle connection. It, it's the very first thing I tell actually all of my clients to do. I find it very common for my female clients. They tend to always assume or think that they have a weak core. And so I actually do diaphragm breathing when I weight lift. I'll do it during squats, deadlifts, and anything and everything. It is very relaxing as I'm just sitting here. It <laughs> is. I, so that's the very first thing I do that when I meditate as well. So my mm -hmm. husband and I, we both meditate. He seems to have a lot of difficulty meditating. His mind is just mm -hmm. constantly racing. So, and I told him, do the diaphragm breathing. Yeah. It, you know? So now, you feel a little comfortable doing the diaphragm breathing? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so now what it's going to be kind of like a two part little series. So we're going to do the diaphragm breathing and you can kind of watch me as I explain. And then we are going to activate our pelvic floor and mm -hmm. our core. 
And this is like a little mind bending puzzle, is it? Yeah. <laughs> and I think I've definitely heard of this description before. And I think I stuck with it because other descriptions, I'm like, I think I'm just doing a Kegel, right? Um, right. So once again, we can do this laying down or sitting up. So we'll, we'll do it sitting up. We'll do that diaphragm breath. And once again, you can close your eyes. And with a few of the things that I'm going to say, it is fine if you giggle because okay. I mostly <laughs> get a giggle whenever I start yeah. <laughs> with some All of right. this vocabulary. But okay, so we're going to hand on the chest, hand on the belly. We're going to practice those diaphragm breaths. Okay, so we'll just do a few and then I'll keep on continuing the instructions. So. Inhale. Exhale out of breath, out of the mouth. So while you are doing that a few times, I'm going to slowly explain what I want you to do next. So you, while you're sitting there on your next exhale, I want you to shift your hips a little kind of upward or forward. I've actually never explained this while somebody's sitting up, so this will be interesting. So completely relax and fill your belly on the inhale. And then on the exhale, tilt your pelvis, your hips forward. Okay, we're going to keep adding to that exhale. So the inhale will remain the same. And then on the exhale, you are going to picture a jelly bean at the entrance of your vagina. And what you're going to do is you are slowly, very slowly, just going to pull the jelly bean up just a little. Bit. When you go to, uh, to, when you're all out of breath for the exhale, just release. It's fine. You keep starting over. You'll get further and further. When you're pulling that jelly bean up on the exhale and keep your hips and your pelvis tilted, it may not be a smooth transition all the way up. It might be kind of like an elevator. It stops temporarily, goes again, stops temporarily, goes again. That's normal. Everybody's kind of transition is not always completely smooth. When we pull that jelly bean on the exhale as far up as we can, and we think, okay, I, I can't pull this jelly bean up any further. We are going to crush it. Just picture just crushing it with your core, your abs, kind of just like an intense Kegel. Okay, so now we're going to crush. Okay, so start all of the steps over again. Inhale, start the belly. Exhale, shift the pelvis and hips. Take the jelly bean, pull, pull, pull brush the jelly bean, and now you're going to push your belly button into your spine. So it takes a few tries to get this. It's a lot of work here. It is a lot of mind yeah. muscle work. I just had a client last week. I went over this with her in person, and she said that she felt things that she's never even felt before. And I mean, and like I've mentioned, you know, I've, I've never, I don't have any children. But I can definitely see how this, if you've got ab separation and you're doing all this and you're working your pelvic floor, I mean, I can feel this. Yeah. Absolutely. And of course, then in your regular uh, weightlifting session, hit session, what cardio session, whatever, you can still, like, even when I'm watching TV, I lean back a little bit, especially if my daughter's mm -hmm. in my arms I'm, and I'm engaging that core. I'm constantly engaging the core. Right now, I actually have a lumbar support pillow. Yeah, But once again, I can lean back. I've been engaging my core this whole podcast so far. So Yeah, um, wow. I don't do ab work, right? So a mm -hmm. lot of people assume, oh, you must do a lot of ab work. No, I, I don't. I just engage my core um, as much as I can. Oh, wow. Yeah. So did you notice when you did that? Like when you did that, like, were you kind of feeling things that you never really even thought of before? Yeah. So I do like to work out. So I, you know, I'm no stranger to lifting weights or running and things like that. But this, I've never applied this during a workout. <laughs> Absolutely. Any of it, you know? Yeah. And yeah, of course you get, you know, you, when you're with a trainer, engage your core, you know, tighten your abs. So you do that. But all that together, I mean, I, yeah. And actually, so before I started any of this, 
even when I, I was helping to manage a clinical athletic center and, and they would always say, okay, brace your core. Okay. I'm going to have flexing, yeah. right? Yeah. They wouldn't tell me any different. No, mm -hmm. no, no, no. Actually, it's just like a, okay, yeah. it's just a little bit. You're not flexing. So it's completely different, right? And so I would, when I was doing stuff, but right. you're actually overexerting it, right? So yeah, yeah plenty to learn mm -hmm. in this and this new career of mine. And it's uh, so rewarding and so exciting that I get to Definitely, help yeah. so many different women. So what else? What else do you do? Like after we do all that kind of engaging and, you know, picking up the jelly bean, you know, what's next? I guess. So first, how long do we, are you meant to be doing that or how many times a day? Yeah. And so then what, what else? Right. I, the general guideline, um, yeah. if I'm not consulting with somebody and they haven't done uh, my pre or postnatal um, kind of like health questionnaire is I yeah. tell people, of course, the first thing is like, listen to your body. If it doesn't feel mm. good, don't do it. Yeah. Um, I always recommend going to a pelvic floor physiotherapist because they know more than me. And then they can say, oh, give them some beginner course stuff or some intermediate or advanced. Yeah. I mean, most times if it's advanced, they're not really going to see, they're probably going to the pelvic floor physiotherapist and they are telling them, you actually don't need to see us again. Just kind of, you know, right. keep working out or whatever. But then the next, the next thing is what I did. And I'm sure other people did it too. But at the time, I, like I said, I didn't really know what to search because mm. I didn't really know what I was doing. So I actually just started like laying on the mat and doing as many exercises as I could while laying on the mat. So mm. right up, it took me seven months for my incision not to hurt. So yeah. I actually could not do that much. There are women that I'm helping right now who have had C-sections that are further ahead in their recovery than I was. So it's, it's yeah. very, very interesting considering, oh, I was into fitness before, but leg lifts, leg lifts is, is one thing. Yeah, okay. Just laying on the floor, pushing your back into the mat and slowly lifting one leg up at a time. So I did, I did a lot of that. Heel taps is an easier one. So your feet are already in the air. You're laying on the mat and you're kind of tapping your heel yeah. off the floor. Bird dogs, side planks is another one. So these are all the beginner stuff. And like I said, nobody told me this, but I actually just did it on my own. Mm -hmm. And then when I consulted with the physiotherapist, I told her, oh, by the way, while I'm doing all of these exercises, I'm doing that pelvic floor and core activation and she's like that's genius like yes yeah. you should always like that's only going to increase your recovery and stuff right so although it did take me um, that long I am glad that I didn't give up because there were times where I'm like oh I, I this is it for me this is the end of my yeah. fitness journey and I kept it up and kept it up because also it's it's my me time and it's it's my breakaway yeah. As much as I love my kid, I need, I need to like mental space. Yeah. And so I kept up with it and, you know, I, I found my passion and I, now there's so much to learn with the postpartum world. And although I'm a certified trainer, I'm actually currently getting certified in pre and postnatal fitness. So it's, I'm well versed in the recovery aspect of it, but I'd like to know all of the ins and outs of that fitness. So I'm, I'm presently taking certification in that as well. So that will only oh, help me. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. So it must, I guess, as you're learning with the, you know, the pre, you've got the post down and you were saying that you were doing some exercises on your own as well when you were pregnant. So doing these pre, does that reduce the risk of the ab separation or is that kind of going to happen anyway? I or think, will it happen I, yeah, and I think that's I think it's a clearly on an individual basis because the, the biggest, the biggest thing with the diastasis recti is, okay, so your abs, they're supposed to flip and you yeah. are supposed to be patient and mm. wait and not mm. work out. Even if you Hurry feel like you wait, can work out, say. right? Yeah. Even if you feel like working out and that's the thing, like you're just sitting there, you're like, mm, I need, I need to get back to my body. Yeah. I'm not doing anything. What do I do with myself? Because I was there and I'm like, oh, what do I do with myself? Like I need to be moving. I need to be doing this and this. But actually just like that flexion, like let's just say mm -hmm. nothing hurt me. And I started doing crunches and wow. sit up, sent like and I'm constantly like flexing my body. That lower, the lower part of your abdomen, your transverse abdominis, that's where all the weak stuff is. And now yeah. it's still separated and you're tightening it, tightening it, but it's mm -hmm. still separated. So then it's gotta do this and it's got further. So it'll be like 
tight, but not together. The muscle, yeah, okay. the tissue and stuff needs to heal together. And only time will do that. So for instance, a, a dear friend of mine, very big into CrossFit, has, I think, won a few titles in her time. She competed three months postpartum. Wow. And that was when I learned about diastasis recti. And she didn't even know the name of it. She's like, oh, yeah, that's my absolute. I'm like, what do you mean that's your absolute? That is yeah. significant. So technically, a significant ab separation, we measure it by finger width. So anything past two finger widths is severe after right. your healing time, right? So I probably had this or this or this, like when I first had my kid, but yeah. after that, like eight weeks, it should be down to less than two. Wow. Hers were probably that far. While you competing? Could, like, while competing. Wow. Yes. Wow. And she said, she's like, yeah, it's a little uncomfortable, but you just, you just, you just got to give it your all. She was so passionate about it, you know? Wow. Um, and did it pose any real health risk to her? No, no, it didn't. She was able to compete and stuff. She placed, she enjoyed herself. But then afterwards, she's like, okay, you can go back now. Go, right. Go, go back together. No, it didn't. And it wouldn't. Wow. Um, and I think she may have done a little bit of that. She had three kids. I think she may have done a little bit of that on her second kid and a whole lot of that on her, on her third kid. Mm -hmm. So she actually ended up getting surgery to put it back together. Um, wow. I was going to yeah. ask, does it impact then future pregnancies or no, is it no, just, no, yeah. because if it's, yeah. if it's already, if it's already wide, yeah. you're yeah. good to go. You can right? really there's, stick someone in there. Road. Yeah. 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 Okay. Gosh, I'm yeah. learning so much. <laughs> oh, I'm still learning every yeah. day, every day. You, I guess you just, you know, think, and I mean, I'm going to sound really naive to everyone out there who's had a child, but you just kind of think, you know, you know, it's hard because you hear your friends say it's tough to get their body back, but you also don't think like about the muscles that don't naturally just go back together. You know, you only hear about what's on the outside because that's what people focus on. Well, look at my belly now. I look like this. I have stretch marks. I have the mom pouch. You don't think about all the other stuff, you know, that come along no. with it. Like peeing and in your pants, you know? And yes, I, yes, absolutely. Mm. I was fortunate enough to not have to uh, encounter any urinary incontinence. Uh, yeah. Should I have a second kid? Maybe that will happen. But... Yeah. If I do my core work on my pelvic floor got, activation, yeah. I should be, I should be pretty good. But I think the real struggle with, with women, when they say, oh, well, this is me now. Mm -hmm. First of all, if that's you now, that is okay. My main focus is to make people feel good in their own skin, yeah. whether that be super fit or whether they just want to have more energy, whether they just want to get rid of a little mom coach. But the thing is, my exercises and like my guide that the ebook that I created, if you just followed the exercises, maybe you'll notice a small difference. Yeah. But like you have to walk. Yeah. Walk, just live an active lifestyle, whether that be walking, yeah. running, cycling, swimming, whatever. Um, and then it's the eating healthy part. Mm -hmm. I had to work out and eat in a way that I never had to before because yeah, okay. my, my belly was really holding on to that extra fat. Now, did it take a long time to get rid of it? No, because I'm disciplined and I'm very motivated by working out, but not everybody is. Yeah. And so it is a completely, like it's, it's a complete lifestyle change. It is a behavior change. So, and women get really hurt on themselves. Oh, I'm not seeing progress. It's, it's been three months. I'm not seeing anything. It will takes. it could take, it took me, it took me a good, maybe 10, 11 months to mm. finally feel, and I'll never be, I'll never have the body that I had before and I don't want it. Yeah. You know, I feel way mentally stronger. I know what my body's capable of and I housed a human being, yeah. <laughs> right? So definitely the empowerment is definitely and like the confidence is women is it, it's, it's a very very big struggle because they're like oh this is me now and i can't do anything and i don't have time and i'm always tired and blah, blah blah it's hard it is very mm. hard do i have the time every day to work out no i don't 
So sometimes I will get up at 6 a.m. when I hadn't, I probably went to bed at midnight and I'm so tired, but that's the only time that I am going to get to work out. Luckily, I don't have to go to work nine to five. Yeah. I, my, my full-time job is taking care of my daughter and my part-time job turning mm-hmm. into a full-time job is, is this postpartum fitness. Yeah. So that, of course, definitely motivates me more. I could be gone for the weekend and I get a message from somebody asking for help on a particular exercise that they saw on my Facebook page. And what do I do? Pull over, babe. Yeah. I'm going to record a quick video yeah. uh, because it's just that easy to help somebody and that probably helped them have a good evening. Yeah. So I, I definitely really take those things seriously. Although I wouldn't want all of my following to expect Leslie to reply in an hour or whatever, I do try to limit it, but I can usually tell by the, by the tone or I I get real messages of desperation from from women. And so I just want to help as many people as I can, because uh, although I didn't, I wasn't affected by postpartum depression, I could definitely see that being a rabbit hole, that would be very hard to dig yourself out of. So I just like to try to be as positive and just empower women as best as I can and just keep on learning and yeah, just making people feel stronger and, you know, better about themselves and more confident. Well, it sounds like you're doing that. It sounds like you're doing a great job at it. Yeah. I wanted, yeah, I wanted to ask, what do you say to women who just really don't have the time or are suffering from postpartum depression and it just are finding it hard to get the motivation to get on the mess or, you know, into the gym. How do you kind of navigate that? So the very first thing, of course, that I do is because I'm not a professional with the postpartum depression, it's to talk to somebody. Yeah, Um, certainly. And if, if, you know, I've had had a lot of people to uh, reach out to me with postpartum depression. It's very common. Um, Yeah. It is. It is very. And there's people that I know know well that had it that I didn't even realize did, right? Mm. It was kind of one of those unspoken things, but people are starting to speak out about it more. But when there are some people that don't feel comfortable going to a therapist, I tell them that like, you know, like, I'm there for them. I, I can listen and try to help in any way that I can, but just know that I, I can't promise you that I'm going to make it just go away, you know, because that's not always the case. It sticks with people and they just have to learn, you know, to live with it. But of course there's hope at the, you know, at the end of the tunnel, but for people who don't have time and maybe physically, like you could, you could tell them, I'm going to give you a million dollars if you do this program and they just, they can't. Little things like, I'm going to focus on eating less sugar this week. Okay. Yeah. At the end of the week. And like, you know, like, and I ask people just kind of trick on, there is no judgment at all. Trek. First of all, for one week, track how much artificial sugar you're consuming Mm -hmm. and, you know, and just little things like that. How much water are you drinking? So many people, like, I was supposed to have drank a few, a few ounces of this while talking to you and I still have it. And it's so common. They say it's roughly around half your body weight in ounces is what you're supposed to consume. Other people say 2.7 liters, three liters, a gallon, whatever. But for me, it's just like, just try to drink as much water to make yourself feel hydrated. So like, that's Mm -hmm. another habit. So when I, when I have for my coaching clients, I'll set little daily habits for them. So it's like, watch your sugar for one week and let's just work on that and maybe drink some water. Yeah. The next week is, okay, how was your sleep? So, and I tell them, Hey, this is going to be like a six to eight week process to even get you into the habit of working out. Right. So then I'll start them with walking. Okay. Let the, you know, cause most people like to enjoy, like, you know, like walking, they enjoy it, especially when the weather's nice. So that's kind of an easy one. And also it's that the mutual support, you need mm. somebody to do it with because a lot of people are not motivated to do it on their own. So if they don't have somebody yeah. to help support them, they're not going to do it. Uh, whether it be a dog, that's your reason. Okay. You got to go out now and you got to walk your dog. Now I want you to do like track whatever it is you're doing, whether it be time or distance, every single time you go out, even if it's one minute longer, yeah, 10 meters more, I want you to beat that record every single time. I guess it's that golden rule, you know, you only have to be 1% better every day, you know? Exactly. And it Just took a little me bit years. More. 
It took me years to be disciplined the way I am. And, you know, I don't want to be the type of person either that like tracks, like, you know, all of what they do. So once somebody gets into the habit of, yeah, you know what? Okay, this is now what I'm consuming on a daily basis. And, you know, I'm feeling a lot better. And I definitely think Mm -hmm. I'm not eating as much artificial sugar. I don't know. Like, you know, they're not tracking in REMs, but I don't like to do that. It's yeah. great for people who are fitness like enthusiasts and they have a particular goal that they're working towards. But I really do believe in intuitive eating, just kind of like natural mindset. I'm really big on yeah. that. And that's that's how I live. So if I tracked every single thing that I eat and stuff, yeah, I would probably be more jacked and ripped yeah. and stuff. But it's that's time not who I am. Well. It's very yeah. time consuming. And I just want to be I just want to be authentic in who I am. More and... enjoyable too, I think, when you don't have to, you know, weigh everything. But you're right. You know, just being, you know, when we, when you have your busiest days, it's so easy to just go and put anything in your mouth. You know, whatever I can get, I'm going to eat. But if you become more conscious about that, you know, and I mean, I guess it starts in the grocery store by not having all the junk in the house. But if you just think, okay, this is what I'm eating today, whether or not you're weighing it, doing out portions, it's just a matter of, oh, I actually do eat a handful of jelly beans when I'm sitting at the desk every 20 minutes, you know? Or, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So when I, when I get people to write that out, they're like, do oh I my eat gosh. that? <laughs> yeah. Okay, and they're yeah. like, ah, oh, this is very bad. And I'm like, mm. it's not bad. This is normal. This is normal for you. Yeah. This is normal. It's not bad. Don't compare yourself to anybody else. Now. Yeah. What is normal for you? What is it that you want? Do you want more energy? Do you want to lose some weight? Do you want to become stronger? Whatever it is that their goal is, then I just kind of streamline it to that. I just little baby steps at a time. And that seems to be the most successful for me. Yeah, I think I I would imagine I would find it a lot harder if, I mean, I'm similar to you. I like to, I'm conscious about what I'm eating and I'm, I'm not too strict about it, but I do pay attention. And I think that if it came down to just having to do a big switch one day, like an automatic, now you're this strict, now you're doing this many minutes of working out, you're doing exactly these exercises. I think being oh, yeah. kind of rigid and a quick snap, I think that would be tough to just and even handle me- mentally. Yes. And over the years, and it, it's going to happen again. So I'm planning, we're taking a family trip to the Azores Islands, Portugal. Wow, I'm nice. not going to have my equipment there. Yes. Very, very, I'm very excited for it. Not excited for the flight with my toddler. <laughs> but, <laughs> but when I get there, I'm just going to bring my TRX and yeah. my little mini cable bands and hope that it goes well. But at the end of the day, if I don't really work out that much, that's it. I'm yeah. enjoying myself. That's what vacations yeah. are for. Yeah. I want to be walking lots and people get really hard on themselves for that, right? Oh, oh, um, you know, and I tell, I, I, I tell people all the time, it's not how many times you fall, it's how many times you get back up. For me too, over, I've been exercising for 12 to 14 years. I have fallen maybe 20, maybe yeah. more, but I've gotten up more. Right. Yeah, so and that's that that's what people I feel like when somebody thinks about a personal trainer, personal trainer is going to be so hard on them. The personal trainer is going to tell them this is what you need to do. Blah, 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 blah. I really just like to leave it in the client's hands. What is it yeah. that you want? And we'll work around it. That's their and journey they're in control. Yeah, it's their journey. They are in control the whole time. And all I can do is guide them with the goals that they have given me. And so it seems to be working out quite well like with my postpartum business because every single individual is so different so sometimes somebody will fill out a form i'll give them my options explain like different programs to them in a consult and i'm like what is blah 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 blah?" (laughs) because there are so many different health conditions so it's i'm I'm continuously learning and just yeah helping people feel better and it's just so rewarding Um, it's all you know doing this it's really great able to take your own experience and just share it with so many people who are kind of you know they've been begging for it they really right? have and even, uh, even like i said before, parents 
I'm sure you remember growing up, your mom and her sisters and your, you know, everyone just always, after I had kids, my body changed, it never was the same. Oh, and I got it too. They're like, oh, you know, you're not going to have that fit body after yeah. baby, right? And like, <laughs> yes. And, yeah. um, and the, yeah, it's, it's just, it's so hard for women, right? Because it's like, yeah. like I said, it's, it's the image thing, right? Like, oh, uh, when I was pregnant, um, they're like, oh, that butt's getting big. Oh, look at those thighs. Yeah. Um, and although, and I'm like, sorry, I'm growing a human. You know, I, know. <laughs> I don't need I this right now. over here. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, you yeah. know, and of course they don't mean anything by it because generationally, yeah. right? Mm. Like, I mean, you think about it. Yes, you are supposed to gain weight to house this human. Mm. But do I need a reminder that my thighs are bigger? No. Probably not. No. Um, right? Yeah. But the thing is, if you go into your pregnancy and you've already had fitness within your lifestyle before you go into your pregnancy knowing this is what is going to happen this you know this is these are the changes that are going to happen to your body this is what you are going to do afterwards and you are going to rest and you are going to take your time and then you are going to work out everything's going to be fine you will have to work a little bit harder. But right now, I don't work out any differently than when I did like before baby. Like I'm now kind of at that spot where it's like I feel like my body has kind of normalized again. So now I can, you know, have chocolate. Like I ate way too much chocolate last night and the night before, yeah. you know, and I don't feel guilty for it because I, I work hard for what I do. I'm consistent. I feel good. And I think that you really need to not feel guilty about eating junk food. Yeah. It's just like, it's ingrained in us. Society has kind of construed this misconception, you know, and it's like, no, you have to enjoy yourself too. Absolutely. So Leslie, where can anyone who's listening find you? You know, we mentioned this Facebook group. You have a new website, I believe. How yes, can we get and it's people just across? LeslieAnnFitness.com. Nice. And my Facebook group is just Leslie Ann Fit. And I'll Is share the links there? to those. Yeah, yeah, perfect. <laughs> yeah, I can share those at the in the transcript and in, in the video description. Absolutely. I want to thank you for coming on today. I feel like I've learned a lot. It's definitely a lot to think about. And Absolutely. I really it hope is. that anybody listening who is kind of feeling down on themselves or, you know, just want to get rid of a mom pooch or feel better, get in touch with Leslie and see how she can help. I'll share that Absolutely. ebook as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was a pleasure being here. If you were listening right now and you were feeling down about yourself and stuff, it is possible. Baby steps. Thank you so right. much for having me. Thank you, everyone, for listening. And we'll see you again next time. Thanks, Leslie. Thanks. Thanks for joining me on the Holistic Health Show. If you enjoyed the episode, subscribe now and get ready to embark on an incredible journey toward holistic wellness. Until next time, be well and stay holistic.